on the um, the concept of the network is done. Yeah, it, it's uh, worth uh, going over for me. So this is uh, the concept that a lot of people struggle with. And, you know, I mean, it is possible through guess at, trial and error that you eventually stumble upon the correct answer. Right. <laughs> but, but I, was, that, but I thought, but the, th the thing about me, right, I thought I knew uh, the right answer and it wasn't right. So I was, yeah. it's the, I started thinking more about yeah. it, but yeah. yeah. So let me go over um, the reasoning process for the right answer. So uh, let me first check off all the right answers first. Um, so that people can verify or whatever. So to the network, choose all situations in which no network is done. Mm -hmm. And I am going to pick all the ones that are that I know to be correct. So this is not it. This is correct. Um, this is not it. This is correct. This is uh, correct. And this is not correct. All right, so that should be the correct choices, three of them. And I can tell you which questions I have seen people struggle with. Mm -hmm. People will struggle with this. Sometimes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And people will struggle with this sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it really has to do with the idea of network. Mm -hmm. And um, I do say, you know, network is defined as the total work done by all the forces acting on the object. And the thing about um, physics that people find challenging is especially in that intersection where the concepts are combined with the mathematical formulas, expressions. I think uh, most people do okay with the things that are purely mathematical. You know, you know the formula, remember, memorize, learn, the formulas to apply, you apply the formulas, you're done. Concept, it's just like any other science class. You learn the concepts, you apply the concept, and you're done. It's where those two things intersect that people do struggle. And biggest the thing is you kind of have to, in some sense, learn to think like a mathematician, where you are applying this definition uh, very rigidly, even in the circumstances where it, it makes no intuitive sense to you. Uh, this is where I'm asking you to think like a mathematician, talk like a mathematician, and listen like a mathematician. And there's a kind of a hint at that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, the consequence of network is described in section 4.2. So let me go to the textbook section so that you can have, at least have a reference to go to, to kind of chew on and think about. And it's uh, what we refer to as work, um, and it should really be work kinetic energy theorem. Um, and what it says is the, the network donor system equals the change in the, this quantity, which you are going to learn is kinetic energy. And it's called the theorem because it can be proven mathematically. And this is the kind of the intersection of the conceptual idea and mathematics. And the way to make this work is to be very careful about what you call network. Uh, network means the work done by um, all the forces acting on the object. So um, I can give you, uh, I think I can, uh, I should go over three examples. The lawnmower being pushed across the lawn a textbook being slowly raised, and a cart sliding down a frictionless ramp. Because I think those are the examples where people might struggle. And um, the way to kind of navigate through concepts like this is something that I think I briefly demonstrated in chapter three, which is to draw the force diagram, or what we um, refer to as FBD, or free body diagram. This is a diagram that illustrates all the forces on an object. It helps you kind of think through um, a, an interaction that could be complicated. So let me go through the first one, a lawnmower. So I have a kind of my dot that's going to be representation of lawnmower. So there are forces acting on this lawnmower. 
um, well, it says it's being pushed, so there must be um, push for that's there. So let me just label that as push. And this is a more of a chapter three concept, but um, if you just leave your free body diagram here, then uh, you will, I hope you realize that uh, that's not complete. It's not consistent with how the situation is being described because um, it says that the lawnmower is moving at a constant speed, meaning the acceleration is zero. So if we were to say that's the only force on it, then uh, I'm not done because that'll show you there should be acceleration, but I want zero acceleration. This is where after thinking through it, where you have to eventually realize there's a friction force that, um, uh, that's uh, acting backward on the lawnmower, that's pulling the lawnmower back. So when you add up all these forces, the net force is equal to zero. The total force, all the forces acting on the lawnmower is zero. So this is where, once again, you apply the definition of work. The definition of work is force times displacement. And here with the net force, the definition of net work is the net force times displacement. So if your net force is equal to zero, the net work done is zero. Now, it doesn't mean then the, that the, whoever is pushing the lawnmower is doing no work. Whoever is pushing the lawnmower is doing work, is doing non-zero work. It's just that the friction force happens to be doing negative work. That's uh, making the net work add up to zero. Okay, the lawnmower. Can I take that as yes? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then let me go over the ex example of the textbook being raised very slowly and a cart sliding down frictionless ramp. So a textbook being raised very slowly. Uh, let me uh, draw the... Um, Throw the forces on it, so there must be some, um, if it's being raised, there must be some upward push on the textbook. So there's an upward push on the textbook. Now, in this case, even <coughs> before I hear about being raised very slowly, um, I should kind of think about gravity, because this is something moving vertically, on Earth, there's always gravitational force. So you are always going to have to worry about gravitational force. So you should have that drawn. And this is where you, um, you kind of have to learn to read physics questions, um, which is that this uh, phrase, very slowly, it's a, it's a kind of a code word. It has a significance in problem solving that that is very easy to miss. So let me kind of walk through this reasoning process. When I say very slowly, I mean the speed is very small. In fact, so small that you might say that it's zero. Mm. And if it's at zero all the time, then that must mean that acceleration is zero. And having figured out that, that acceleration is zero means that the net force, the sum of the upward push and the downward pull of gravity, they must add up to zero net force. It's, it's almost like it's uh, um, constant speed and therefore we can say it'll be, right? Yeah, so I could have also said uh, at raised at a constant speed and the answer would be the same, yeah. Because what we care about is the zero acceleration. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, here also zero network is done. Now in terms of the uh, work done on the textbook, the pushing force, you are doing work. You are doing positive work. But what you will have to realize is that with that upward displacement, the gravitational force is doing uh, negative work. So that's why the network has up to zero. And in uh, one of the sections of chapter four, I try to connect that negative work 
done by conservative forces with the idea of potential energy. And you should take a look at that. And I need to make a video at some point on that. <laughs> so, and finally, uh, let me do the occult slides down a frictionless ramp because that's actually a bit of a complicated one. Uh, so let me just draw the figure so that I can show you why it's, uh, um, it's not going to be net zero work beyond the fact that it's clearly accelerating. So you know speed is changing, you know kinetic energy is changing. Let me give you a reasoning that's more based on forces. Um, so you have a cart that's on a, uh, you have some object, cart, that's on a ramp. Then uh, let me just draw a separate figure here. So this is the ramp, this is the cart. Then uh, there are actually quite a few forces here. So in terms of your intuition on what would happen, you know what's gonna happen, it's going to slide it down. In terms of forces, it takes quite a bit of thinking through. And this is one of those questions that I would do not ask because it deals with the two dimensional vectors and we are not trying to do that. But let me just draw all the forces. So on that cart, you have gravitational force that's uh, acting straight downward, that's pulling the cart straight down. Um, and, uh, but the cart is not um, accelerating straight downward because it's in contact with the ramp and the ramp is kind of pushing the cart up that way. We call that support force or normal force mm -hmm. uh, that's pointed that way. And when you look at that, um, that's all the forces. If it's a frictionless ramp, then there's the other forces. And um, so in physics 4A, we go through more analysis. The analysis we go through is that, you know, we break up this gravitational force into the two components, one perpendicular to the surface and one that's parallel. The one that's perpendicular gets balanced up by normal force. And it's one that's parallel that's giving you your, uh, that's leading up to your acceleration that gives you this velocity. And what's important to hear in the context of our class is that this cart has displacement as it's sliding down. And there is some amount of gravitational force that's pointing in the same direction as displacement. So this gravitational force is doing positive work. That's why the cart is gaining kinetic energy. And this uh, normal force and this other component of gravitational force, both of them are doing zero work because it's perpendicular to displacement. So, uh, so you have uh, one kind of part of the force that's doing positive work. You have the, all the other parts of the force that's doing no work. So when you add them all up, you should be doing non-zero work, uh, non-zero network. And um, you can see that in the fact that it's gaining kinetic energy and all the other things. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so this is a question. I, I th think in the past semesters, I have gotten questions about this one. I remember going over this in one of the office hours. So it's good to have gone over this. I will be able to use this video in the future semester after editing it. Um, so thank you for asking the question. Um, I hope this explains uh, the answer. <laughs>